Hey, Tim here. In this video, I'm going to talk you through centralized row level security in Tableau 21.4. This is a huge feature. It's going to take a lot more than just, just this one video to cover it. But nonetheless, um, let's get stuck in. Now, in the previous video, I created a virtual connection. I'm not going to cover how to do that here. I've already covered it in that video. So check that out before you watch this one. Nevertheless, we are in the same virtual connection that we created here. You can see that I've got invoices, employees, and orders available here. And what I'm now going to do is essentially start creating the uh, centralized row level security or the data policies in essence. Now, there's three ways I'm going to show you how to do this here. Um, the first two are simple and the last one is uh, an, uh, using an entitlement table of sort which is going to be based on our employees table here now what I did in this particular data set is I changed one of the employees names to match my name on Tableau service if you're trying this out you need to remember that whatever entitlement table you're using it's going to need to match to something on Tableau server so Tableau can actually match uh, those two things up so let's get stuck into this and let's find out how this works now the first thing I'm going to do is go over here to the data policies window. This is in the virtual connection setup. And if I go over to the data policies windows, you'll see that I have no data policies available. If I actually scroll this down, you can see that I can create a new policy here and I get this window, which essentially shows me what's going on. Now I'm going to untick this with policy applied uh, setup. So we just see the table as it's applied right now with no data policies connected. For the first one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the orders table. And I'm going to drag it just into this sort of uh, dotted area that says add as a policy table, uh, apply this policy condition to this table. So when you do that, the orders table appears here on the left hand side. And there's this sort of stepped guide, essentially step one, you add the tables and columns that you want to map. And then on step two, you write the policy condition. So in this particular case, what I'm going to do is add a column. And in this case, it's going to be ship city. Now, one thing that sort of confuse me is that whatever you add here, um, ship city doesn't actually have to be what you use over here. And let me explain that a little bit. You see this term here saying policy one, if you rename that, you can actually use that over here to represent this ship city. So let me just show you how that works. So in here, I'm going to double click and I'm going to type in city. And now that I've done that, I can go over here to the left and I can just type uh, city uh, equals, and I'm just going to check one specific city here, uh, Leon. Okay. And uh, I put a little uh, uh, sort of piece of punctuation there. And now you can see that's been applied there. And now if I go over to the bottom here and I tick this box with the policy applied, we should see that uh, with me uh, looking at this particular table, I should only see rows from the city Leon. So let that just load and we should get a preview of that very soon. So yeah, you can see that's worked. We've got 10 of 830 rows and you can see that the only city I'm seeing here is Leon. So that's our very first simple policy setup. You can see it's working. Now, one of the nice things I like about this is that you've actually got the full capability of the Tableau calculation window here on the right hand side. So you could write some absolutely mad, mad, uh, you know, policies with this. Um, I, I, I don't know, sort of, I, I like I've never used any of these in a row level security setup, but you could you've got date functions here, you've got full Tableau server user functions. I've done videos on most of these functions as well. So date functions, all of that. I've done videos on all of them. So I pretty much go and check them out. So that's really sort of nice to see because you can build logic statements into these policies. And that's going to be sort of a uh, like a mind maze to get your head into. But it's really exciting that that option's there. Now, I've created this policy for this table. You can see that this is the orders table. Unfortunately, policies can't be applied to, well, more than one table. So in this case, let me rephrase this. Tables can't be part of more than one policy. So one table can only have one policy. And you can see here that I have a little sort of shield, which means that this table already has a policy, which means we can't add it to another one. We have to go and create a new policy to add the other tables. So let's go ahead to our invoices table here. And what I want to do is actually create a new policy for this one. So I can actually uh, click on this and uh, add it to this policy. If I do do that, 
Let me just go in and add it there. It's going to ask me for the invoices, which field represents the city. So what I'll then have to do is go into invoices, select ship, ship, city. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Got to be careful with that one. And uh, for this one, uh, if I click on invoices here, you'll see that my invoices table here is now only showing Leon. And if I click on my orders table here, my orders table is only showing Leon there. So this interface sort of adapts to what you're doing and you have to sort of bear in mind that you can add multiple tables here and the city column is just simply defining a standard field across all of these tables and then when this policy is applied to this connection everyone who sits behind this policy is going to need to use this policy because this is a column level policy it's only going to return data from Leon in this particular case to absolutely everyone and the more I add to this table the more it's going to affect um, all the other users who are using it. So that's one simple use case. It's really, really nice to use and nice to see. For the next one, I'm going to use the sales uh, person in a particular table. This time it's going to match my own name. So how do we remove these policies? Well, if I go back to the policy list, let's just go back here. I can actually go to this little three dot name and remove it. And we're back to square one with no policies applied. Now, if I uh, start by creating a new policy again. You'll see that we start with a blank canvas and our preview starts to load again and I'll untick this with policy applied uh, tick box here and we let basically just start again. We're basically back to square one and for the record here I'm selecting the tables on the left which is what is generating this preview. If I then select them here then that will generate the preview as well. So the preview can be driven from two different areas. It's a bit of a sort of uh, an interesting user interface to get used to, but once you get used to it, it's actually a real delight to use, I think. I think this is one of the best uh, implementations of the connection window, uh, bringing in the best parts of Tableau Prep that we've seen already um, into this experience to really make it nice and rich. Now for the next one, what I'm going to do is bring in the invoices table. And what I'll do is I'll add it as a policy in here and you'll see that it makes its way in here. And what I'll do is I'll add a column to map. And for this particular one, I'm going to look for the salesperson. And so for this salesperson column, what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to call this sales just to keep this simple and easy to type. But then now that I've added that in, I'm just going to go in here to sales and I'm just going to say sales equal um, username. So I think this is the username function in Tableau service. So essentially what I'm saying is that this sales column, which is referring to the salesperson, is going to basically go and grab that salesperson's name. Where is this uh, here? So you'll see it here in this column. And in this particular case, I'm looking to match my own full name against the Tableau server username, which in this case is Tim Nguena. I pur purposely cooked this data. Um, for this demo so that it would match um, in this particular case. Okay, so that's essentially sort of the loop that's happening here. So if I go ahead and look at this with the policy applied, um, I am Tim Nguena, so I can go in here and check this and uh, you'll see that uh, nothing is working here. Um, for whatever reason, this is not working. So let me untick this and make sure that this is actually doing what I, what I think it should be doing. So here we are, we've got the salesperson here. And this is the full name, Tim Nguena. Everything is working as expected. Now, if I just uh, go to this function here and let's just do this. Let's just let's just cook this deliberately. Let's just get this to match using my actual text. That's something we can, of course, do. And now that that's working, there's no sort of issue with that. Let's just check what happens. And you see that does work. So what's clearly going on here is that I must I must have a different um, username uh, to what I thought I had. So instead of username, let's see if I can grab my full name instead from server. So my username is clearly not working for this particular uh, demo. So let's try my full name. And finally, that's working. So that's a good bit of debugging in real time there. We had to kind of figure that out as I'm recording a video, which is always a stressful thing. But there you go. I tried to use the username. In this case, it's actually my email, which isn't going to work. But if I try the full name, which is what server knows as my full name, Tim 
Gwena, then that works just fine. So there you go. That's another version of this row level security that we've set up. Now, when you apply these policies, you can see that it is applied here to the invoices table. You can actually go back to the tables list and see them applied there. So when I go back to the tables list, you'll see that it's called policy one over here. So if you want to make sure that things make sense, give these policies a good name. So let's go back to data policies. We can just double click into where it says policy one and give it a name and call this sales uh, person match. Uh, I'm going to describe what the policy does, hit enter. And now if I go back to my tables, you'll see that this has a nice clear name and it's easy to use. And we can start sort of working with this um, over when we start connecting to data. Now, if I go back to my data policies, you can see this one's work. We've now created two row level security examples. Let's go ahead and create the third one, which is a user entitlement table example. Okay, for this next one, if we go back to the data policies column and create a new policy, you'll see that we have the same window. And for this one, I'm going to drag the employees table, not onto this one, but over here onto the entitlement table example. And when we do that, things get a little bit sort of crazy because essentially what it wants us now to do is to map everything together. So what we now need to do is add all of these uh, into the uh, into the table. So I'm actually just going to add all of these in. Uh, you can see that this is essentially going to allow us to uh, get this to work. So you can see the employees table is there and you can see the other tables are just here. So what we can now do is go ahead and match these up. And what we're essentially doing is almost creating a relationship between these two, telling it uh, what the employee ID is in both data sets. And then that uh, sort of relationship interface is actually what's going to be driving the centralized low level row level security. So there we go. We've got that matching. So now that's that's good. We can we can't rename this particular capability because um, this is this is just the way it is uh, essentially. So now that that's set up, what we now have to do is go back and let's preview this data one more time. Okay, I think it doesn't want to load because I haven't done anything here. So let's go in here and just type in uh, what's going on. So for this one, uh, you can bring in various items from your entitlement table. So for this one, I'm going to select full name, which in this case is actually coming from my employees table. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that equals the server full name here, like so. And that should become a valid uh, centralized low level security. You can see the calculation is indeed valid. No notification. Uh, to be heard there. I'm going to leave this window open. So if we do make a mistake, it tells us. And then what I can do with the policy applied, um, let's go ahead and see what happens here. Um, this should work. I think I need to actually go and choose a user. So let me let me make sure that I've selected myself in this particular use case and wait and see what's going on. So let the, let that Let's let that load a little bit and then we can we can sort of uh, debug this if it's got a problem. So there you go. I've actually uh, managed to load all of that. And if I go over to this database, you can see I'm actually looking at orders here. And the strange thing here is because we orders table doesn't have any uh, salesperson name. It's just using employee ID. We can't actually see what's going on. But you can see here that it's got one employee ID, employee ID eight. And uh, we can see 104 of 830 rows. If I go over to the invoices table, this might take a little less time to load. And you can see that the only salesperson I can see here is Tim Nguena, which indeed matches my own server username. And again, this is being matched to the server full name. And the full name that it's being matched to is coming from our employees table, which is the same as what we're just sort of using to describe the entitlement for the user, essentially. So. This is super cool. I really like this. This is a nice interface. It's actually, it feels like it's been part of Tableau all along, which is really, really cool to see. It works in web edit only, of course. You have to go and set these up in the virtual connection setup. And now when you save this, if I go ahead and publish this, now this uh, uh, sort of data policy is now gone off and is now part of that virtual connections. Everyone who connects to this will only be able to work on their own rows that they have access to see. Uh, and so that's really, really cool. Um, you could type in additional conditions. For example, full name equals uh, full name or username equals Tim Nguena. And what that will do is it will essentially, if you type the second one, it will essentially give you full access. If the username is Tim Nguena, then it will just give me access to everything. Otherwise, for everyone else, the full name is going to be what it's going to check against. So you can build in logic statements and checks to kind of 
create super access for specific people. Maybe they're part of groups. Uh, don't forget you've got the uh, uh, server-based uh, um, groups here. So you can check if they're a member of a specific group. And if they are, show them everything. And if not, then check their full name matches the entitlement table and off you go. So all of this is super, super powerful. You can sort of do a lot with this. And again, I really like that you've got the full calculation window interface here. So anything you've done in the past could now be ported into this particular window to do some really interesting things. So that's centralized row level security. Um, once you've done this, it's applied to the virtual connection. And I've already shown you in the virtual connection video how to connect to your data set. And those connections will observe the policies that are set up here. I'd love to see column level policies. Of course, this has just come out. So I'm immediately asking for the next thing. Column level policies will be great because it will be great for those instances where you're not having to build multiple workbooks for different groups of people who can't see certain metrics. You could build one workbook, one set of uh, dashboards, and just control what metrics people can and can't see. And of course, uh, have some sort of capability to allow these to degrade gracefully, if that makes sense, inside of a dashboard. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, if you like the uh, centralized row level security, then by all means, uh, you know, let me know in the comments. If you've got ideas or things you want to try, let me know in the comments and I'll try and do my best to have a go at this as well. For the virtual connections video and for this video, I'll try and put any resources that I've used in those descriptions as well. So check those descriptions for up-to-date uh, information. And of course, the comment, uh, the first comment is always pinned is from me and uh, I'll update you there if there's an issue, if I've made a mistake or something's not quite right. So thanks for watching again and I'll catch you in the next video.